This is an ABC6 News special on your side, champions. Good evening. I'm ABC6 anchor Bob Kendrick. For the past three years, each week, I've introduced you to extraordinary people and groups who are dedicated to improving this place we call home. Over a hundred of them so far. They come from cities and towns all over central Ohio, and we call them ABC6 On Your Side Champions. For the next hour, we'll revisit many of them. Champions who give voice to areas that are often neglected. Healing hands and a soft place to land to strangers who need help. They are looking out for our children and those with no voice. They don't just help the needy, but rather see a need and answer the call. One of the things you learn when covering Community Champions is how much good can come from the simplest idea. Kate Coke Gatch is known as the Bike Lady, and here's how a simple way to say thanks grew into a way to put more than a thousand foster kids on two wheels every year. Every year, we grow a little bit. With every nut tightened, every seat adjusted, and tire filled. It's a nice project, something to do, give back to the community. These inmates at Pickaway Correctional Institution are helping to give what they can't have. Their freedom, in essence, the freedom of childhood. Kate Cook, a.k.a. the Bike Lady, has found a workforce only too happy to keep her mission rolling. I raise money and I buy bikes, helmets, and locks, and I donate them all to Children's Services in Central Ohio. So blow me a kiss. The Bike Lady's story was born five Christmases ago, when little Lainey joined Kate's family. Both of my children were foster children first as infants, and ultimately that led to their adoption. And I just wanted to do something for other kids that were still in the system. Back in the day, Kate just went out and paid retail for assembled bikes. But this year brought a bright idea. Buy unassembled bikes from Huffy at a fraction of the cost and ask the prison for help. Instantaneously, they said, come on down and let's talk about it. And it's been a beautiful partnership since. Three kids of my own, and you know, I've done this quite a few times. There are children who are in foster care in Central Ohio because their fathers are incarcerated here. That type of symbiotic relationship or marriage can't be beat. <laughs> Delivery days are joyful at Children's Services. A bike to a child in foster care means freedom, to feel the wind in their face and to be able to move around and be like any other child in their neighborhood. Kate can only give freedom to kids. The men will still have to spend Christmas behind the walls and wire. But perhaps be comforted by knowing that the bike lady is also bringing a little piece of them into hundreds of unforgettable Christmas mornings. You're this foster kid to give them that one positive lifelong memory. I think that's a pretty powerful thing. In the past two years, the bike lady has donated 2,300 new bikes, locks, and helmets to Ohio foster kids. The service has expanded to include 15 more counties, and the goal this year is to donate 1,400 bikes. Photographer Mark Williams was our first On Your Side champion. I met Mark back in September of 2011 as he was putting the finishing touches on a remarkable way to honor kids. A calendar that Mark cooked up to raise money for a kid again. The Ohio-based group helps give kids battling disease fun ways to be kids. Well, Mark wanted to pay tribute to siblings for the way that they support a sick brother or sister, so he photographed them and later, with some help from Photoshop, transformed them into angels. His calendar raised $1,500 for the charity and was transformative for him, too. I'm inspired. Hey, man, I'll tell you what. Do I sit there, put some music on, play a slideshow of the, of the images, and then I have myself a little cry. Mark no longer produces the calendar, but still volunteers his photographic talents for A Kid Again. He's also planning to do a series of photos and stories about homeless people in Ohio. When their child has a life-threatening illness, an all-consuming darkness can descend on the parents. A good prayer, a good diagnosis, some help with the bills, each is a patch of light. And nobody knows that better than Mindy Atwood. It's the inspiration behind her charity, Patches of Light. Give them a baby. Four-year-old Spitfire Josie clearly has a song in her heart. Healthy snacks. And she's not yeah. shy about showing yeah. you why. I'm a scar. She has a malformation of her tricuspid valve, and she has an enlarged heart. Hospital bound for weeks at a time, Ryan and Justin Offerman had someone who knew just what they needed. She sent some gift cards to us to Subway, which was really nice because when we are at Children's, we eat at Subway three times a day. 
She is a school librarian in Hilliard. We're just trying to bring a patch of light to these families during their dark times. Mindy Atwood could write a book on what parents of critically and terminally ill children go through. An autobiography, in fact. My husband and I have four children, and two of which were critically ill. We had so many things happen to us because we were afraid to tell people that we were struggling. With that experience came inspiration, patches of light. We pay things such as rent, mortgages, we repair cars, buy groceries, absolutely anything the families need that's non-medical to stay with their children. Patches of Light is high dedication on low overhead. With their own fundraisers. We made a little over $2,100 for the rocket launch. And Patches has become a magnet for other fundraisers. Thank you. No need for Subway three times a day for the Uffermans anymore. But they'll never forget there's light for parents in crisis. The wonderful thing about Mindy and Patch's light is that she can relate. So what do you want your legacy of all this to be? Just some day for people to say she took a bad experience and she honored her children with it and helped others. Since we profiled Mindy Atwood in Patches of Light two years ago, the group has seen explosive growth. The requests for assistance up 20 percent. They continue to offer programs to entertain and educate kids at Nationwide Children's and Ronald McDonald House, and they operate a children's garden now in Hilliard that teaches parents and kids the benefits of a healthy lifestyle. If you know of someone or a group that we should recognize for their effort in the community, please send along a nomination to champs at abc6onyourside.com. Sadly, we lost one of our champions not long after he was profiled. Bill Adams was one of the most memorable and involved community activists in the city. He carried with him an unshakable belief in the potential of East Columbus and its children. He had the endless energy, he had the endless spirit. Bill Adams was hard to pin down. He seemed to be everywhere. And his son Will says that's because... With every success, um, there was always something still out there that needed to be done. Born in East Columbus in 1929, Bill's earliest service was as a Boy Scout. Later, to his country in the Korean War and with the Department of Defense, he moved around but eventually settled for good back on the east side. I think the more that he got involved, um, the more that he saw need in different areas, whether it was the Kiwanis Club, <clears throat> the Boy Scouts. Always had time for every community organization that he could possibly get involved in. That drive would make him a Ward 26 committee man, a tireless campaigner for Barack Obama and Michael Coleman. Advisory boards, service groups, every facet of community building got his attention. It won't come up! He felt a community's strength is built with its schools. Mr. Adams was an extraordinary man. He came to our building without fail every day. And I always referred to East Columbus Elementary School as an oasis in the desert. Good afternoon, Mrs. Ray. He worked tirelessly with our kids. He was more than a volunteer. He was a teacher, a mentor, a counselor. He was a visionary. Health Administrator Michael Johnson describes Bill as his mentor. In fact, the two are about to see a mutual dream realized, a community health center right next to the school, what Bill would call his last hurrah. And I got to tell you, that was very dear to Mr. Adams' heart, and he worked to the very end his best to try <laughs> to did. make that yes, happen. Bill Adams was that guy who gets the ball rolling, a guy with his heart on the east side who saw the whole city as one big neighborhood. How would he want East Columbus, Columbus in general, to remember him? As their biggest friend. Dad was their biggest friend. The Crumb Park Rec Center has since been renamed the William H. Adams Community Center, and his children are working very hard to continue on with Bill Adams' service to the community and uh, looking at ways to continue with his legacy. We're very happy to welcome in tonight Will Adams, one of Bill's children, and Will, thanks for joining us. Thank you. You really have some big shoes to fill. Uh, indeed. What are you working on? Uh, right now we're working on uh, the community center, uh, number one, number two, the foundation, uh, the W.H. Adams Youth Foundation. Uh, we started that back in July, and we want to continue on with uh, not only just the legacy, but also some of the programs, uh, the commitment to the east side, and venture out into the community as a whole in Columbus. What are some of the specific programs that are near and dear to your heart that the foundation is working with? Well, that would be easy. That, that's all about the kids, uh, whether it's the, uh, the Boy Scouts, um, the youth organizations, uh, trying to get them more involved in the community, um, trying to give them a basis um, for what's going on now and, and what they can be going on in the future. What does your dad tell you 
as you were coming up about community service and, and what commitment you should have to that? Well, it was big. Um, he felt that everyone should do their part. Uh, we definitely made sure even when Crumb Park was just a, a blade of grass, we were still out there picking up trash and, and working hard for that community center and even before there was a community center, uh, just to make sure that it was, it was nice and uh, for the community and, and for people to enjoy it. Why did he believe so strongly in not only the east side, but in Columbus in particular? I know he was involved in Franklin and very deeply as well. Uh, that's correct, whether obviously with the uh, Kiwanis Club out in, in that area, uh, but just in general. Um, he wanted to make sure that uh, Columbus grew. He wanted to make sure that people had a sense of pride, a uh, sense of community, a sense of help. Uh, and I think that's just what he was all about. Well, service is certainly in the Adams family DNA, and I thank you for joining us tonight. I know you guys are going to continue to do great work over the years, and the East Side will benefit from it. Thank you. We appreciate it. Nice to have you here, Will. Thank you. Will Adams. When we come back, a shelter for kids built by a mom on a mission. I wanted to do something to maybe ensure that another mother wouldn't lose her son. Still ahead, turning pain into promise as a mother keeps children running the race on the right path. Then the tough but tender guys punching out a path for kids. How the sweet science is keeping them on the straight and narrow. They're not the most beautiful bed you're ever going to sleep on. And the Bed Brigade. What drives Rob Ramey and his crew to turn rough lumber into a good night's sleep for the needy in Central Ohio? Gotta get out and get them. It's the ABC 6 on your side. Why are you running away from us? Are you a doctor? Is that the answer? Is that acceptable behavior? Do you feel bad about it? Is this classic bait and switch? Why do you keep doing this? I don't you got anything to say? Happen. It's not in the city of Columbus. There are a lot of people, a lot of money. Are officers being held accountable? Enough yapping is enough yapping. We're waiting for the evil one. I'm not buying it. When you're giving money to the university, do you ever question where it's going? This is how you do business? No gun. There wasn't to answer the questions. We did some digging. Here the camera's rolling. There was points of rage. This is ridiculous. We started asking questions. This would not be considered a bridge to nowhere. One out of 541 claims paid. Why? Has the state failed its firefighters? Absolutely we have. That take priority. ABC 6 investigators. You're going to go through all this to get away. You're going to be on TV. Welcome back to our hour-long special On Your Side Champions. I'm Bob Kendrick. Anyone who works to change lives knows that it changes theirs. And few have seen as much change as Dan and Cindy Gremling. From their dream house to a crack house, from empty nesters to new parents, grandparents to scores of kids, all because they decided to build a house of hope. This is a totally different world than Pickaway County and the suburbs. You know what he ever says, I want to move to a bad neighborhood and bring in all the kids. That is exactly what Cindy Gremling and her husband Dan have done. Bring in the kids for Saturday morning at Grandma's house. We sing songs, do activities, do crafts, just give them a safe place to come. An oasis just like grandma's place. They've made the comment that it smells good and there's always something to eat. That's what a grandma's house is. That means awesome. Cindy and Dan could not have imagined this two years ago, living comfortably in rural Pickaway County. But after helping to start a women's shelter in the city, Cindy was approached by a friend who wanted her to do the same in her late parents' home. Cindy said yes. I did not realize that the house was one half block off Parsons and a wreck. But Hazel had lived here for 53 years and Cindy was determined to make Hazel's a house of hope. We try to show them something different. It's the essence of what a grandma is. We are making a difference. It's worked so well, the Gremlings are currently remodeling their fourth house of hope. Hubby and I are kind of like pilgrims. So we've moved four times in the last two years. You like your life more now than before? Or? Absolutely. I think this was what I was created for. She's got you a treat. A world away from the comforts of Pickaway County, the Gremlings are restoring hope. Once you're here, once you see this, 
one house at a time. You can't pretend this doesn't exist. So all kids can know they're never far from grandma's house. It's a labor of love. And I am just naive enough to think that love makes a difference. Cindy and Dan now operate five Houses of Hope in the greater Columbus area, and this home in Sunbury is an exciting new chapter for them. Coming up, Cindy will tell us about how it's going to protect a whole different group of teens and young women. Well, Rachel Muha also shelters kids after school, and her reason for doing that is one of the most extraordinary I've ever heard. Well, hello, cutie. We are their family. We're not just a rec center. It's a place where community Yes, yes, you can. And compassion. How are you? Can Hello, be found everybody. in equal measure. I tell them all, once they walk in the door, they belong to us, whether they like it or not. <laughs> Rachel Muha's Run the Race Center is first and foremost about love. So did you, did you look at but this? We sweatshirt? know that the way to a child's heart is through games and sports and crafts, music, bikes, parties. They're Not talking reading. about trying to take him away from me. Many of these inner city kids face challenges that can lead them down the wrong path. Run the Race hopes to reset their starting line. It comes from scripture. We're told to put aside every encumbrance that clings to us and persevere in running the race. What Rachel must put aside is the most searing pain. The 1999 murder of her son, Brian. He was in the house that he was renting off campus. Two boys broke in and hurt him and then killed him. How does the center connect with Brian's death? Well, Terrell and Nathan, the two who took Brian's life, didn't have anything like this. I wanted to do something to maybe ensure that another mother wouldn't lose her son. A child lost. Oh, I love you, Harry. And so, so many others gained. Are you guys ready for the big party on Thursday? As Rachel Muha shows them how to run toward hope. Since Brian loved children, we could do something for other kids. And that's why we started Run the Race Club. Rachel tells me that Run the Race Club now has its own building in a neighborhood that previously had no community or rec center. They also received a donation of a farmhouse and eight acres, so each week now they can take groups of kids out of the city and to the farm. Like Rachel, Jamie Mathias and Wes Sims saw boredom at the root of so many of Lancaster's drug and crime problems, so they decided to get tough on kids. They start by putting them in a ring to keep them on the straight and narrow. Who's the champion? I you can hear the pride grow in every blow, Gigi. kick, yeah. good, and pin. The Lancaster Police Athletic League gym is pounding out a path for kids. Go! And Jamie oh. Mathias volunteers at this three-ring rumble. We have a, a karate program. We have a jiu-jitsu team, a good crew of amateur boxers that go around and compete, and uh, after-school programs. Wes Sims and Jamie first opened this gym to train fellow mixed martial artists. There was a lot of nights where it was just me and Jamie, or me and Jamie and one or two other people, and that was it. Dive over. Until a friend suggested they take a leap into PAL. It's like a movie for like daddy daycare, ain't it? These kids grapple with all the temptations of youth, but Jamie thinks the time here gives them weapons to make good decisions. There's a lot, a lot of children in this area that I think really need this need a place that they can come. Driving to his leg. Call their second home, feel safe. And help them see a world outside Lancaster. We take kids to tournaments, yeah, we do amateur boxing, uh, karate tournaments. We, we just had kids come back from the Arnold Classic and we have a couple of different competitions coming on today. Whether it's punches or pizza on the menu, Jamie and Wes want Powell to be a place where kids learn. Well, let me hear that war cry. The pride that can echo through the rest of their lives. Don't give up, never quit, never quit. We're gonna hear the cry, okay? We're gonna hear the war cry, okay? West tells me the Police Athletic League is still thriving. They now operate out of the YMCA Recplex in Lancaster. They have had an athlete go on to become a Lancaster police officer, another that's studying criminal science, and yet another who's won the Ohio Golden Gloves. And they continue to do monthly community service projects. Coming up, the sweet sound of service. 
how a choir from every corner of Columbus is lifting communities as they lift their voice. Also, healing Franklinton. Still ahead tonight, the doctor committing her life to helping the community one patient at a time. For six years, the Harmony Project has united people from every corner of Columbus into a soaring voice, 250 of them. Its director, David Brown, is the Pied Piper. Follow him for a week, and he'll lead you to the choir's higher purpose, service. The Harmony Project is the diversity of Columbus in full voice, led by a voice you can't ignore. Dynamic, magnetic, David Brown. The Harmony Project is a hybrid organization, arts and community service. To stand on that stage, they got to serve in the community. Yeah. We'll spend a week with Brown and you'll see the real range this choir has. So this is the South High Harmony Project, and they've been rehearsing with David Brown since September. Yeah. Now they've been invited to sing at the Mayor's State of the City Address, which they are extremely excited about. AmeriCorps volunteer Danny Moses is in the adult choir and helped bring Harmony here to a school with virtually no after-school activities. They're getting up and doing solos and experiencing things that they haven't before, being brave and sort of supporting each other through that process. One, two, lean on me. On Tuesdays, Brown and members of the choir are side by side with folks trying to re-enter a society that at one time would barely see them, let alone hear them. If you just call me. Men like Dave. Once homeless, he's found the courage to sing solo. I did a solo on uh, James Taylor's uh, You Got a Friend. I feel good. I feel like being a celebrity. <laughs> We're actually going to plant some more trees. We're actually going to and coming soon, Harmony's most ambitious project yet. Cleaning up a long stretch of Livingston Avenue. David Brown and the choir know that music is a great unifier, but... It's not to get us all to think the same. It's not to get us all to believe, vote, love, worship the same. Kids from South showed us last Thursday how much higher the notes can go. It's to get us all to acknowledge that there are needs in the community and they're not going to get done if we leave them up to somebody else. Harmony Project coming off another very successful year with sold out shows and a once in a lifetime trip for the kids of South High Harmony. Last spring, they spent a weekend in New York City. For many, it was their first trip away from Columbus. They started by seeing a performance of The Lion King on Broadway, and then the next day it was their turn to perform there with a pop-up rendition of On Broadway. Since it's the Harmony Project, they were also there to serve, planting a community garden at the Lower East Side Girls Club. They also took in the 9-11 memorial and offered a farewell song at Columbus Circle. Thanks to the Harmony Project, their school year brought song, service, and the big city. If you know of someone or a group that we should recognize for their effort in the community, please send along a nomination to champs at abc6onyourside.com. Art, in all of its forms, is a really powerful magnet for community activism. Some of the artists we've met have been as free with their generosity as they have been with their creativity. Giovanni Santiago is an airbrush artist whose work can be seen all over Columbus, including several graffiti burger restaurants. He also mentors kids. That includes this group of neighbors who would use his studio as a sort of creative drop-in center. Giovanni also paints murals at rec centers and schools and overseas. In Haiti, for example, his team sprayed new life into the walls of an orphanage, hospital and church. With a palette that's equal parts paint, inspiration and motivation, Giovanni Santiago is one artist who truly adds color to people. If you know of someone or a group that we should recognize for their effort in the community, please send along a nomination to champs at abc6onyourside.com. Early on, like at the age of four, I knew I was gonna be on, I was gonna be somebody famous, like the next Michael Jackson. Cordell Hargrove still has big dreams. As the head of his dance company, Abstract Motion, he and his dancers are trying to expand the creative scene in Columbus. That includes bringing along the next generation of dancers here at Brent Nell Rec Center. 
where he volunteers to choreograph and design shows for the Brentnell team. He sees it as a chance to pull inner city kids in different directions. We decided that we were going to make it like a modern day thriller by Michael Jackson and our theme was like gothic Barbie dolls. And I like introduced them into like thinking big picture. Coming up, homeless pets need to eat too. The soup kitchen of the four-legged variety and how it's saving the lives of both owner and pet. And a good night's sleep. The humbling experience this man had when he delivered new beds to two little girls and how it's inspired him to help more than a thousand others. And removing risk for teens. How this historic home hopes to rewrite the personal history of vulnerable teens. Welcome back to our special presentation, ABC6 On Your Side Champions. I'm Bob Kendrick. And we're coming to you tonight from this elegant 1830s vintage home currently being renovated by Dan and Cindy Gremling in Sunbury. Earlier in the hour, we showed you why the Gremlings started rehabbing broken down homes in some of Columbus's riskiest areas. They're giving neighbor kids a place to gather, like Grandma's house used to be, a safe, comfortable home where they can play and pray. There are now five Houses of Hope in Greater Columbus, and this one here in Sunbury will be number six. And it has a new focus. We're joined now by Cindy Grumling, and it's so great to see you again. Good to see you. It looks like you have a bit of work left to do. We do have some work. When do you think you'll have it open? We're looking at probably spring next year. How are you planning on using it? Well, this is a home, it's always been about the children. You know, we started with women. Well, this is a home where we're going to help women with their unborn children. Um, they will be choosing a life plan for this baby, and um, this will be a respite, a place for them to get out of their surroundings and um, give life to a child. This, I think, was originally the plan for Hazel's House of Hope uh, down on South Moreland. Uh, how did that morph? Why did that change? Well, it was about helping get some girls off the street. Mm -hmm. But then when we got into Morrill, we realized we weren't gonna rehab girls there. I could sit on the porch and watch the girls working the corner and the drug addicts going in and out of the house that my friend died in. So you're not gonna keep them in those surroundings and be able to rehab. So, yeah. Do you get overwhelmed by it at all? Um, I try not to think about it too much. You get up, you go every day, you do what you gotta do. Every now and then I step back and, and then just go back to where we were. Just keep moving. Well, good for you and thank goodness you are. Keep up the good work. Thank you. And the home rental on top of it all. Yeah. In our spare time. <laughs> In your spare time, right. Great to see you, Cindy. Good to see you. If you know of someone or a group that we should recognize for their effort in the community, please send along a nomination to champs at abc6onyourside.com. Rob Ramey believes that a house needs a bed to be a home. He feels that too many of the working poor don't have a place to rest, recharge, and dream. So this contractor built the Bed Brigade. Ironically, he's too busy to sleep now. They're not assembled by master craftsmen. Not much to look at. They're not the most beautiful bed you're ever going to sleep on. But the full measure of what's being built in this cold shed is about to be seen in the faces of two little girls across town. They're not pretty, but they are to somebody who's never had a bed. And so Circleville's Bed Brigade will not rest until every needy family has one. We got the hinges. Rob Ramey and his team see their mission as delivering a good night's sleep and... Just restoring human dignity. A lot of times there's, I mean, who doesn't want to provide a bed for their kid? Each bed can go from rough lumber to sleepworthy in a matter of minutes allowing the Bed Brigade to build and deliver 568 last year in Central Ohio alone. The crazy thing is, it's, it's working class poor. I, I call it the invisible poor. Bob figures a thousand people have rested easier thanks to Bed Brigade. He still remembers his first delivery, the two little girls with beads in their hair. They were more, more excited about receiving a bed than, uh, uh, than my kids were at, at Christmas. That was a... Uh, that was a humbling experience for me. A bunch of basic guys and some college kids and a beater truck can make a difference. I don't want that big. Little Marquita and Natalie are jumping out of their skins as the brigade troops in with the promise of no more nights on the couch. 
<laughs> I think they're more excited than me. And a once homeless family can feel a little more settled yeah. now. For us, it's not, a, it's not a matter of charity, it's a matter of justice. Um, there's kids in our community, they shouldn't be sleeping on the floors. With the humblest of designs... Let's pray. ...and the noblest of purposes, the Bed Brigade and Rob Ramey work to give families some peace of mind as their pillow. I see the power that it, uh, uh, it transforms people's lives. Since we profiled him last year, Rob has started two new chapters of Bed Brigade, one each serving Franklin and Ross counties, and they gratefully accept donations at bedbrigade.org. Most doctors are generous with their time and expertise, and we've met a lot of them in our travels. Dr. Mark Bechtel is among the dozens of medical professionals who flock to the Physician's Free Clinic at Columbus Public Health. Each Monday, he offers free dermatological treatment to people without health insurance. Along with another champion, interpreter Richard Lupton, they break down language and social barriers, often with new immigrants to the U.S. Because they're very, very scared of acquiring very expensive and large medical bills. Uh, we provide them with free medical care, with free medication. Uh, if they need surgeries for skin cancer, that's provided also. I've been very, very blessed in my career, and I think it's important for physicians to reach out to those in need if you express that comfort and concern and that high level of interest, uh, it really makes a difference in patient care. Just a few miles directly west of the Physicians Free Clinic is the Lower Lights Christian Health Center in Franklinton. It's the brainchild of Dr. Dana Volangen, whose idea is to give folks living below the poverty level a sense of going to a private practice for the best in health care. It's an irony you just can't roll past. Here, framed by rusting iron and decay, is a former candy factory. We really provide a place for people to come and become whole. That's the healthiest place in Franklinton. This is our beautiful waiting room that wow. used to be a warehouse bay. Um, we built the health center in three warehouse bays. If you want to just breathe normally, that would be... 11 years ago, Dr. Way. Dana Volangen <laughs> helped to start the Lower Lights Christian Health Center with a novel mission to take high quality health care and a private practice model and make it accessible to everybody who needs it regardless of ability to pay. Uh, we provide comprehensive services, all aspects of primary care, OB and prenatal care. We have partnerships with OSU that help us provide vision and dental care. Even before medical school, Dr. Dana's vision had always been to set up practice where help was needed most. Yeah, I mean, I do consider myself a medical missionary to my own country. <laughs> and it's easy to see why she's so sweet on the former Anthony Thomas candy factory. This space is going to allow us to go from 8,300 patients to 15,000 patients over the next two to three years. I have a lot of health issues. Zia Doster is one of the over 200 mostly uninsured patients being added every month. It's very exciting because I've been struggling with my health and basically I need the help and they're willing to help me. And Dana really is the doctor next door since moving to Franklinton from Delaware six years ago. You see it on the way back? I do. I think that um, there are more and more folks who are investing in houses here. Have you been healthy? Dr. Dana Volangen invests her life in people. To help the neighborhood recover health and wellness in the literal sense. With a medical mission to help Franklinton bloom again. Every day I'm humbled to know that I'm part of something bigger than myself. Lower Lights Christian Health Center has also seen some exciting growth recently. They now have a pharmacy on site in Franklinton, and they've opened up new clinics in Marysville and German Village in Columbus. Dr. Sam Herkham came to us by way of one of the worst animal abuse cases we've ever seen. You may remember North Star. He's the gentle horse brought to the OSU Equine Center after being savagely burned. Someone poured a flammable liquid on him and lit it. Well, North Star became Sam's great challenge, preventing infection, healing the burns, and eventually giving the horse skin grafts. The case brought worldwide attention to OSU and its extraordinary stable of equine specialists. Sam says there was a discussion about putting North Star down, but they chose instead to fight for him. It's very easy to quit, and if it was in human medicine, that wouldn't be the option. You know, when this horse does well and, and is reunited with his family at home, it's going to be very gratifying. OSU tells me that Cornell University heard about Dr. Herkham's work with North Star and wooed him away. But we're happy to report that North Star is alive and thriving at a secret location. 
Dr. Herkim paid him a final checkup visit last summer in Pennsylvania. Still ahead tonight, pets are undoubtedly part of our home, however humble it may be. The organization making sure that pets stay fed and healthy even if their owner is homeless. And another dog's best friend, the veterinarian specializing in greyhounds, why it's not just the speed of the breed that makes them so fascinating. Now to a pair of On Your Side champions. When Connie Swackhammer and Stacy Lambright inherited 600 pounds of dog food from a closing pet store, they were unsure of what to do with it. But they saw a need, and it's grown into something much bigger than they imagined. Realtor Stacy Lambright might not be the first person you'd expect to see heading off into the weeds with a bag of pet food. She's like, give me my food already. Unless you're Daisy, or one of the homeless pet owners like Mike in this camp. I know. I love them to death. They basically like my best friends. How you doing, Lewis? They includes Connie Swackhammer, who along with Stacy started Faithful Forgotten Best Friends a year ago. We feed the pets of the homeless. I've got some information on the spay clinic. And see if we can get them the vet care that they need. Along with camp visits, each Thursday morning the group sets up in a parking lot at Holy Family Church in Franklinton. For a sort of soup kitchen for the four-legged family. All the food is donated, so even if Fat Boy here spills it. We can only hand out a week's worth of food at a time. And I will tell you, Bob, there's no greed, there's no grabbing. They're just thankful. It'd be like having a kid. Not everyone thinks the homeless should have dependent animals. I asked Mike what he'd want them to know. My animals are like my kids. You know, love kids, I love animals. I mean, I can't just up and leave them. These people could go to a shelter tomorrow if they would go ahead and take the dogs to the pound, but they know it's a certain death. The shelters are full. Evidently, I'm a chew toy. <laughs> Not an option for over 200 pets and counting. If you need anything else, let us know. Now that they can count on Stacy and Connie to be their voice, <coughs> even if some seem to have a pretty good one already. It's just a good mixture. We're getting to help the people by helping the, the most important thing to them. And we're joined now by Connie Swackhammer. So great to see you again. And good to see you, Bob. A couple of years since we profiled you. Give me some of the ways that Faithful Forgotten Best Friends has expanded. Well, we started out feeding the pets of the homeless. Last year, we were able to provide over 70,000 pounds of dry food, over 3,000 cans of canned food, which is a far cry from when we started out with 11 cans. Um, still located where we were in, in the Franklinton area serving the low-income folks. I know that you have brought a wellness component into this that's so important. Dr. Kelly French, who's another one of our On Your Side champions, is offering medical care, veterinary care. Give us an idea of some of her services. Well, Kelly comes in on Thursdays and she provides what we call basic wellness care, giving the pets physicals, providing vaccinations that they need. We've recently began to microchip the animals, so that's another way they can get back to their owners. And spay and neutering has become a, a big thing for us to go ahead and keep the animal population down in the area. Well, it's great to see the work you're doing and that it's growing and that the need is there and you're able to fill it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Connie Swackhammer from Faithful Forgotten Best Friends. You know that pets are such an important part of our life. It's no surprise that so many of our community champions are serving the pet community as well. Yes, a good girl. And they include Guillermo Couto, a veterinarian at OSU. Guillermo is a foremost expert on greyhounds. Much of his busy practice centers around this breed. He'll see hundreds in a year, most rescued after their days at the racetrack are over. Over half of the former racers die of cancer, so Dr. Couteau raises money to pay for chemo and also to repair track injuries like broken legs. Now, most of us know about a greyhound's speed, but Dr. Couteau offers a long list of other traits that make the breed special. And their kidneys are different, their heart is different, their muscles are different, their bones are different. Every, everything is really, really different. Most of them actually have a universal blood type and it's a, a, equivalent to the O negative in people. For that reason, Dr. Couteau has set up a large blood bank using greyhounds. These retired racers have a new career now, helping other dogs. When it came time for Danelle Calhoun's 10th birthday, she didn't want to receive. She needed to give. Danelle and her younger sister Tristan are fixtures at the Fairfield County Dog Shelter. Each weekend they do roll call, who's new and who's not. Some dogs, like Marley, are tougher to adopt. 
So Tanya Walls takes them to her farm for rehab, but it's expensive. So Donnell set out to raise money. We're looking at my event on Facebook. I raised $651 so far. Well, that was 18 months ago. Since then, the Calhoun girls have raised close to $5,000 for Central Ohio homeless and ill dogs. They've also worked to find dogs new homes, sending them to Missouri, Michigan, and Illinois. Coming up, no greater gift. A young woman who followed her faith and heart to save the life of her mother's best friend. And homeless for a night. The man making high school students walk a mile in someone else's shoes, and how the experience is changing lives. Get out and get him. Now. Come on. See ABC six on your side. Why are you running away from us? Are you a doctor? Is that the answer? Is that acceptable behavior? Do you feel bad about it? Is this classic bait and switch? Why do you keep doing this? I don't you got anything to say? Good. It's not in the city of Columbus. There are a lot of people, a lot of money. Are officers being held accountable? Enough yapping is enough yapping. We're waiting for the evil one. I'm not buying it. When you're giving money to the university, do you ever question where it's going? This is how you do business? No gun. I want to answer the questions. We did some digging. Here's the camera's rolling. There was points of rage. This is ridiculous. We started asking questions. This would not be considered a bridge to nowhere. One out of 541 claims paid. Why? Has the state failed its firefighters? Absolutely have. That take priority. ABC six investigators. You're gonna go through all this to get away. You're gonna be on TV. Welcome back to our ABC six on your side champions special. A few weeks ago, Sam Fisher started her new career as an English teacher at a high school in Wellston, Ohio. But early last year, she gave us all a lesson in faith and courage while helping a longtime family friend. Her mom's best friend, Michelle Pollack, was wasting away from kidney disease and desperately needed a transplant. Sam discovered she was a match, and even though only 20 years old at the time, with her whole life ahead of her, she decided to donate with peace in her heart. Say, you know, the worst outcome, I could die. What? You know, I go to heaven. That's, that's what we strive for as Christians. We caught up with Michelle and Sam recently at a transplant donor reunion. Michelle continues to battle the disease that took her first kidneys, but says recent lab results are the best they've been in four years. She's determined to not let it rule her life and says that Sam will forever be her hero. What better place to plant the seeds of community than in the young? At Columbus's Eastmore Academy, they are a model for high school service, and teacher Bruce Green is the head coach of community. They are broken hearts trying to be filled with pocket change. It's the kind of night to speak from the heart. Ugh and search for the heat. November 19, 2011. Midnight. Cold. In short, the perfect teaching moment for Bruce Green. Uh, to learn uh, more about the, what the homeless go through on an everyday basis, we have probably about 25 of the students who will spend the night in a cardboard box. My back door, it's closed right now. <laughs> Here at Camp Eastmore, the impact team is getting the cold, hard perspective. See what it's like to be homeless. And how is it to be homeless? It's cold, it's not fun. They're people too, and they need to be listened to. I was the type of person that walked past them, but now like, I'm going to stop and like, like, ask them their story. So. For Bruce, the big picture is bonding in a school community to help the wider community. It, it is the group to be in at Eastmore Academy. We do blood drives, we do phonathons, we do anything to help a good cause. In fact, as the sun set on a recent Saturday, you could find Impact teammates ringing up donations for the Salvation Army in Eastmore and helping a soup kitchen downtown. This school wants to give back. Culture giving here is unmatched if any school in Ohio. Let's go, everybody. Head on in, head on in. Head in the end, out of 106 kids, 97 braved the night outdoors. I can't see anybody going to sleep before 3 o'clock. Yeah, this aspect of the homeless camp is somewhat different than yes. reality. Yes, yes. <laughs> Stop wearing blindfolds. Exposure. Just so but we had some people here at Eastmore that were homeless, and a lot of people think it was other people's problems. Because and a new understanding. Somebody tell me a story. For Bruce Green's impact team, it's all part of a cold night's lesson in human warmth. I'd say there's a fine line between these kids, you know, being dedicated, crazy, and just plain giving individuals. Bruce Green tells me that last year the impact team completed over 50 service projects and served over 7,500 meals. Ten of them also went on a mission trip to Charleston, South Carolina. 
Now, one of the kids you saw in Bruce's story is a champion in his own right. Logan Jin is a force, all four feet of him. I could go on and on about Logan. Like most high schools, Eastmore Academy has a big man on campus. It's inspiring. He's just the person that everyone's just like, oh, Logan, like, how do you not know Logan? Oh, yes, in these halls, he is larger than life. I have a diastrophic dysplasia, dwarfism. In fact, Logan Jin is a giant around here, especially to Bruce Green, who runs the school's service club, the Impact Team. Logan, by the time he leaves here, will have a, probably a three-page resume. He's probably done 20 to 25 community service events here. We first met Logan on a frigid December night as he settled into sleep in a box. When we recreate a homeless village. A few weeks later, there he was again in our lens, helping at a soup kitchen. You again? Me again. I really like serving the homeless. Homeless is a big uh, emphasis for the impact team. And in June, lo and behold, Logan again, taking time out of volunteering at a track meet to compete. Let's go, Logan. Service is a running theme in his life. Well, as a child, uh, I was in and out of the hospital getting service for myself. And so I feel that now that I'm able to serve, I think it's my duty and I just want to serve. Spend time with Logan. The less you see dis, the more you see able. It's kind of a joke. I like to call myself uh, not handicapped, but handy capable. Well, nobody looks at Logan as the guy, as the handicapped person with crutches. Now it's, it's Logan the scholar, it's Logan the friend, Logan the community service person. In short, a four-foot force we can all look up to. I just like to get my hands on anything I can, try to get involved, and in. it's really uh, enjoyable to, to, to help others, I feel. At UNC, he co-chairs a committee for disabled advocacy and several others while maintaining a straight A average. Like I said, he is a force. We hope you've enjoyed and above all been inspired by these volunteers and visionaries who work so hard to improve life here in Central Ohio. If you know of someone or a group that we should recognize for their effort in the community, please send along a nomination to champs at abc6onyourside.com. For now, I have my pen and pad and my camera, and I can't wait to introduce you to the next ABC6 On Your Side champion. Thanks for watching. Good night.